only radio show, and I know uh, since we are both uh, audio and video now, you're seeing the handsome Dave Conley here. Uh, but I'm here to introduce our host, Larry Conley. But first, let's uh, let me tell you that this podcast is sponsored by Firehouse Subs and the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. Enjoy more subs, save more lives. Find out about restaurant ownership at www.firehousesubfranchising.com. And now, everyone's favorite podcast, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, live and in person, fresh, uh, actually uh, bailed out of uh, the local county. Well, we won't talk about that with, until the, the trial goes down. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's Deputy Chief of Training for Collinsville, Illinois, and also uh, the the uh, father, we think, of, of Dante, 10 years old now. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. We don't want to talk about that either. Okay, there's a list of things I got to scratch that up. At any rate, here he is, Larry Conn. Thank you. Thank Larry. you for the elaborate uh, introduction. You're welcome. I appreciate it. I'm here all week. I don't. I don't no, get any other I'm places here. I go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's he doing here? That's right. usually, usually what it is. Yeah, it's so security. Getting, yeah, get followed around stores and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. But, no, but but um, thank. Glad to be back. Um, we're back. Um, FDIC again. I really enjoyed this setup, man. Oh I mean, yeah, this, this is this really nice. setup. Mm-hmm. I know years ago we was up in the broom closet. Yeah, we feel like hostages somebody, up yeah, there. Yeah, somebody yeah. with a old phone, flip phone, trying to film us. Right. And it just wasn't pretty. You keep know. getting calls. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyway, but th- this this production is really nice. Mm-hmm. You get to see all the great people walking through FDIC. Right now we're in a pre-conference tomorrow. Is opening ceremonies. Yeah, that's and gonna be with nice. that being the case, we got uh, some great um, keynote speakers. One is um, Scott Thompson, who's going to join us um, after he's finished practicing today. And we're going to have, uh, we're not going to have him. Jason is a little busy, but Jason Hoverman will be one of the keynotes as well. Mm-hmm. So that being the case, is going to be a great time at FDIC yeah. um, so far. Um I don't know. When I come back, I always feel there's uh, our, our Scott right there. And uh, what what I always like is that um, it's it feels like a recharge to me yeah, coming absolutely. back. Absolutely, you know, it feels like a recharge. It feels like that um, um, that um, that I've been grinding all been grinding all all year, mm-hmm. and come back here and catch up with your you know your friends and family. New friends make uh, got new friends make uh, reacquaintance with old friends and mm-hmm. things of that sort. But then another thing that's really a good recharge too is that our um, the leadership, the energy, the knowledge, mm-hmm. all of that at the biggest conference and firefighter conference in the world is is just a it's a great spot that's, to be. That's in. real because I mean just coming here to do the podcast we pass like five or six really great classes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that uh, I had to pull you out of two of them. Uh, yeah, we stepped in so and interrupted good. the classes well, and stuff. It's like, kind yeah, of what we do. Yeah, right. yeah that's but, what we do. We, we're disruptors. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're exactly. disrupted some exactly. things. You know. But, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm just looking forward to a great week. Mm-hmm. Opening ceremony is always a big – it's a big production. I know when we did the keynote in 2021, I, didn't, I know you do this kind of stuff for a living, but mm-hmm. I didn't realize how – how oh, massive involved. it! I yeah, mean, it's yeah, like yeah. video trucks and all kind of stuff in the background, yeah. and a green room and teleprompters. It was, it was quite intimidating. Yeah. So, uh, but we still um, uh, pulled it off. But so it's, this ain't no, you know, just get up on stage and start talking. You right. gotta, you gotta know it's what you're doing. Not your local church. Easter no, this, 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 no, ain't, no, this no. ain't the Easter <laughs> speech at yeah. church in the church basement. No, <laughs> no, this is production. Right. And then they you got the late like. Uh, Live coming to the stage is right. uh, uh, Larry Conley, or coming to the stage is Scott Thompson. Right. You're like, yeah, man, right. that sounds like the Academy right. Awards right. stuff right. that you see on TV. Right. You know, right. the FDIC doing the yeah, damn thing. Man, you know, man, so it's just a great time. But anyway, Scott has joined us, gentlemen. Good morning, uh, yeah, yeah, Scott, Scott Thompson, Thompson from the Colony. Uh, the, you know, was, <laughs> when they spelled the Colony, the Colony is is regular letters, but they put the D. It is capital. The that place, means, the, I mean, the place to be with the chief, uh, <laughs> Scott Thompson. 
So we wanted Scott to join us today. We're going to talk a few things about leadership and, and all that. But the reason one to Scott, the reason Scott is one of my uh, favorite people to talk to and to collaborate with and uh, bounce ideas off of and all that kind of stuff, because he really um, epitomized that mission mindset. Mm -hmm. And, and, and a lot of times you can be doing this thing for so long, it just becomes a job. Mm -hmm. You show up, you punch the proverbial clock, you do your 24, 72, whatever you work. And then that was it. Mm -hmm. And you almost take your ass off the mission. When you first come on a job, the mission is, you know, I'm, I'm so excited. I can't wait to use all this right. cool equipment. I can't wait to exercise the things I learned in the academy. I'm here to help people. Um, you don't watch a bunch of episodes of Emergency if you was <laughs> right, our age. Right. You don't watch Rampart. Uh, uh, yeah, you don't, you don't watch Chicago Fire. You don't yeah. watch all this kind Station of stuff. 19. Stage, yeah, you yeah, think yeah. you're like, yeah, mm -hmm. until you get to it's the job mm -hmm. or the training or the or the mental fortitude you got to have to get up at three in the morning and still deliver world-class customer service, mm -hmm. then it becomes, and then maybe you have some political issues or some, some different things that might happen that when you hit part of any human organization, mm -hmm. things Those are things going to happen. happen. Yeah. But you got to be strong enough mm -hmm. to maintain that mission mindset. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and that's not always easy, but it's good to have people like uh, Chief Thompson kind of really highlight and bring that out. And, uh, and that's why he's one of my favorite people Thank you, to Larry. talk to. He's um, one of my favorite people to talk to. I'm, I just got to be honest. I'm very impressed by finding out, uh, and we just found this out right before we came in, that you've been uh, selected as fire engineering sexiest man alive. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, so I that, forgot about that's, that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's quite a feat. Yeah, get the July issue. <laughs> it's going to be hot. You know. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I thought we were going swimming when they told me to bring my bathing suit. <laughs> No, no. You'll yeah. see the photo. Yeah, you'll I'm see pretty the photo. sure I don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. That, that little small, you don't need the small <laughs> part. You, know? right. you don't understand the assignment. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you don't understand the assignment. Right, right, right. So, uh, uh, Scott, uh, how was your trip in from um, from Dallas? Great, great. Uneventful, just the way I like it. Yeah. Uh, but my wife came in with me. My boys are coming in today. So, okay. uh it's a quick trip, but always, just like you were talking about, always look forward to come back to, mm -hmm. to Indy and see everybody that we right. haven't seen and right. catch up and re-energize. Yeah. There's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, tell for those, I mean, uh, there are people who know who you are, but there might not be people in our demographic. Like, who, who is Scott? You know, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, people from North St. Louis want to know <laughs> right. who, who is Scott. But, but my point is, is that um, one of the things, like I say, I'm impressed with is your you know, functional firefighter uh, vision, the mission mindset. And, and and I knew you were, I didn't know the key, this keynote was going to happen, but I knew you were keynote ready when I saw you uh, last year at the, uh, in Illinois. And we had Thank the uh, fire, summer fire school in Illinois. Mm -hmm. And Scott was the, um, the keynote there. <clears throat> and I'm sitting there, primarily I knew he was going to do a good job, but as a friend in support, mm -hmm. let me sit here and see my good friend Scott. Yeah. I'm not gonna go out and drink beers <laughs> and kick it and have fun. Talk about putting the pressure on. Yeah, right? exactly. I was standing between. I said, beer. Beer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I said they're right in front, like, <laughs> like what, 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 Scott? You know. And then Scott brought he brought the pain. Really? Right? Thank so you. So I was like, at that point, I was like, give me two books. Thank right. you so, yeah. so, so, um, so anyway, uh, kind of tell us. You know, I know that that's the brand, but kind of tell us. You know about that brand. Uh, why is it such such a big deal? You know, the passion and mm -hmm. how much impact you think you done had with that? You know, based on what you've seen. You know, I I, I like to keep things really simple. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that try to make this this job much tougher than it is, and and so the working title of the book when I started out was going to be something along the lines of Fire Service Success: The Basics. Mm -hmm. Now think about it. You know, you're you're from a big big department, busy department. I'm from the other side of the the world almost, mm -hmm. but uh. We all share a common mission, save lives and protect property. But we would be uh, challenged to find agreement on the best way to do that, right? We don't even agree water is the best thing to put on fire because we've got to have bubbles and right, air right, to right, it, right? right, right. So it, it's almost kind of like we're, we're still a frontier. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when, when you, you take on a project like that, you kind of want to start from the beginning as far as mindset. And so to me, you know, when I took that oath, the, the feeling you described perfectly, man, you're very proud of it and it, it's, it means something. And then you, you settle in and you kind of get complacent. But 
the, the mission, it really starts there. It's, it's, it's the most basic. And, you know, it's funny. I was in a class uh, not too long ago and a, and a young kid in the back stood up and he said, you know, maybe we should take the oath every year and refresh that mm -hmm. mission mindset. I thought, you know, that's kind of, kind of pretty cool, but, yeah. but the cool thing about the mission is, is it brings us together. There's a thousand things pulling an organization apart. You know, you had how many stations in, in where you were? Uh, 30 in St. Louis, and, and I got two in Collinsville. And then three shifts or four mm -hmm. shifts, yeah, whatever you yeah. work. So those are a lot of work groups uh, that, that, that things are pulling them in all different directions. But if you say, hey, man, we're going to start here, and let's focus on this mission, mm -hmm. something that, 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 you know, we all can associate with and then build on that. So that was kind of the thought process. And then, you know, some of the great people here that, that mentor you when you take on a project like that, one of the things they tell you is always think about the people you're writing to. Mm. So when I would sit down and write, I would think about firefighters and fire officers. And what can we do to kind of get them on the same page mm. to, to be a force going forward? Now, you mm. know, good leaders, they don't have a, a hard time doing that. You, right. you probably had a line of people wanting to come to your firehouse. Right. You know, it's the officer, it's the firework, it's the crew. Um, but, you know, if, if you don't have that, you, you got to have some things where you can sit down and roll call. Everybody's coming in with, you know, two or three or four days off. Now, let's get focused. Let's get back on track and, and let's kind of talk about what we want to be, you know, the go to engine company or truck company in the city. So so to me, it's it's the most basic of the basic. And if you know, I have a saying, if not this, what mm -hmm. if we're not focusing on the mission? What are we focusing yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, you and I have had some conversations. And I love them all. Off record. Yeah. <laughs> I love them. We, they're, they're probably too candid for, for, <laughs> for, for TV. Yeah. And we've had some conversations probably rated or or our raw thoughts on some Larry of these. Larry County thoughts radio thoughts, show you know. after dark. Yeah, after dark. Yeah. Yeah. After dark. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can't have the FDIC. No, no. Um, the nice uh, bourbon yeah. sitting yeah. on yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got, that, that's, that's, that's another show. Yeah, that's another show. However, um, but... I think we, we kind of had those kind of raw conversations because we were trying to really uh, flush out, like we really need to get back to that kind of mindset because people don't, people get comfortable sometimes. It's, it's just a job or it's kind of the thing I do, but mm -hmm. is it really mission driven? Mm -hmm. And, and you don't want to wait till a tragedy happens to figure that out. You know, a lot of times people tell me well, it don't take all that until something happens. Right. Mm -hmm. Try you lose the firefighter, you, you crash a fire truck, you do whatever because you wasn't mission focused. Mm -hmm. And then that mission not being, I look at it like this. When we show up to take care of business at a fire or it, it don't necessarily have to be a fire, just something as simple as taking care of some good customer service. There's a lot of moving parts to make that, to, to mitigate that successfully. Mm -hmm. We need to eliminate as many distractions as we can on that ship. And if you are kind of narrow that focus, this is the only time that, in my opinion, you should be tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. Because tunnel vision is bad on the fire ground if right. you're not focused on the fire. Exactly. Not focused on, but at this point, you probably need to have some tunnel vision on the mission. Mm -hmm. So you don't lose sight of who pays, your, who pays your salary. You don't lose sight of customer service. You don't lose sight of the, the wearing a uniform with pride. You don't lose sight of taking care of your apparatus and your equipment because when it's time to grab a piece of apparatus, some personnel or whatever, they need to be ready to go right now. They need to be mission driven at this point. We ain't got time to think about that, you know. So that's why I'm really attracted to that particular. But attitude. to that point, if, if I, can, if I want to ask a question regarding before you move forward. So if you say, um, hey, you know, maybe every year we take the oath or whatever, like that young per uh, person said, mm -hmm. suggested. That's fine. I hear a lot of talking about, you know, like uh, recommitting yourself to the mission or why you started or whatever. But then somewhere, like number one, I guess, when do you do that? So you say, well, why not do that now? So you start doing it now. But then how do you sustain that until whenever the next time is you feel like you need to do that again? You know what I mean? So how... Because it's in that space that we end up getting, you know, lost and and then start managing mediocrity. I, I, I you stole that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's managing it's mediocrity. Been, my next book. Right, it was managing Maybe mediocrity. Manage mediocrity. In TM, you know. But anyway, uh, when you're in that space, so how do you, um, you know, like sort of recommit to the mission 
every shift or every day. Every day. Like, what's your, uh, what's the way that that can be done? Or, well, know? I think it's case by case. You know, mm -hmm. I think if you work with a good officer who's mm -hmm. dialed in, who's a part of the team, you know, he's got a vision for the crew. He's got standards for the crew and high expectations. You know, that then, then they probably do it almost on a shift to shift basis. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big believer in roll call. And I'm not talking about, you know, where you stand out in front of the rig and salute with your nice stuff on. But the higher up you go uh, as you promote, the more you have to invest and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And to me, roll call is the best time during the day for an officer to practice leadership because you may not get back to the house after that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, coming in the morning and say, hey, uh, you know, Engine 13, let, let me have let me have 15 minutes of your time. And mm -hmm. you sit down, you check on your people first. You know, hey, how you doing? Or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I knew your dad was sick and in hospice. You know, you, you're checking on the the, the, the mental status of mm -hmm. your people starting there. And that builds up to, yeah, you know, we're going to be the, the badass engine company today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we, if there's a job to be handed out that's that's one of those dirty jobs, we, we want them to give it to us. So mm -hmm. I think if you got that kind of leadership, then you're really doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. But. And there's always a but, right? We know those firehouses where that leadership is lacking, where they couldn't tell you the mission statement from right. The, right. the escape plan to get out of the firehouse. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> and so in those, you know, like we do something called spring training in a colony, Texas, where uh, we tied into baseball. Mm -hmm. So when catchers and pitchers report, our senior men and women report, and, and that's that's a month to revisit the basics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would hope, uh, and it's it's not in writing, but I would hope, you know, if, if we're saying we're revisiting the basics, that's got to start with the mission. Right. And, and that's the reason why we do the stuff we do, you know. And and uh, and so I, I really think it's case to case on the leadership. But I also think, you know, if the chief goes out and does a state of department or a battalion chief or a shift commander comes around to his four or five or six firehouses just every once in a while, just reminding us all why we're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're all blessed to get this job and we're all excited, you know. I remember praying to my God saying, just give me a fire job and I'll do 40 years. And and, and so we just have to just reignite that passion and, and get our people back because, you know, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but humans are kind of lazy by nature. If, yeah. if, if I'm busting my tail on my days off, raising a family, working, and I can come in and sit around a firehouse for 24 hours and do nothing but make calls. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be drawn to that. It's yeah, not right. bad people doing yeah. bad things, yeah. but, you sure. know, so we got to say, hey, this is what it's about. And. And I think part of that, and, and this is where we, we, we kind of mess some things up, we have those organizations where firefighters train because they think it's something that the chief's making them do mm -hmm. or it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, an admin thing. That's not the case at all. We got to get our people where they want to train because they understand their success and survival depends on it. Mm -hmm. Every one of us has goals mm -hmm. for when we walk away from this job. Mm -hmm. And training impacts all those goals, mm -hmm. you know, it, whether we want to retire with a pension or go to Florida or be with our grandkids. or, And, and so we got to make that connection. And I think that starts with the mission. And mm -hmm. in, in order to be effective fulfilling the mission, we got to be well trained. We got to be well led. We got to be supported mm -hmm. and, and uh, allowed, allowed to do the job that we all signed up to do. Yeah. Uh, you're right. The, um, the discipline comes in. And I like you brought up the human factor because sometimes I think we can talk about stuff that sounds like every day we get up and every day we're 100. And that's not necessarily true. <laughs> right. no. What you try to do as a human being is try to have more 100s than you have less than 100 days. But there's some people that they have hardly no 100 no, days. No, none. Yeah. That's what, we, that's what we're talking <laughs> right, about. Right, we're not talking right, about, yeah, yeah. you know, every day. If, if you don't come in, all the hundred days that you worked a year and you're not 100, you're, you're a piece of crap firefighter or mm -hmm. whatever like that. That's not saying that we, it's more attitude sure. than anything. And if you got the attitude, right. Then on those days where, you know, your, 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 um, mental immune system or your excellence immune system is down a little bit. And we all have those days. Right. That's what I'm saying. Kind of, it's not looked at as bad because yeah. we know, any, you know, on most days, you good. Your baseline, your baseline yeah. is good. And yeah. good leaders recognize that in the team. And, right. and, and hey, you know, we had we had a tough tour last, you know, couple of fires. We're going to take it easy today. Yeah. Exactly. And we're going to do that. But that that can't be uh, that can't be the normal way of doing business. The normal way can't be. We take care of business every once in a while. We we train and be excellent, but it can't right. it can't be that. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because we keep talking about leaders and whatnot. You know what I mean? And so. Um, and every time I'm I'm here and at some other conferences, I'm hearing 
uh, you know, about how we got to get, you know, the great leaders to make sure that everybody is inspired, much like what you're saying. But then I'm wondering, like, what's the what's the challenge with pushing that thinking through, you know what I mean, the fire service in general? Like, why is that a thing that's still like a, a great thought, but there's still so many underdeveloped leaders out there? Because some of some people are just inherently like bad at a job, any job. But I mean, most of the time, the reason that the leadership it would be ineffective is just because they've been underdeveloped. They got field promoted or they applied and took a great test or whatever. But as far as like having actual leadership skills, I mean, you know, now God bless them. I mean, that's the reason that we, you know, we're going around <laughs> so much. So that's good. But I'm, I'm making a point to say, you know, what, what's the, I don't know. the the. Well, I think we're all at a disadvantage because of the great people we get to stay in touch with and, yeah. and just text and all that. And so in our worlds, we kind of, we kind of feel like everybody is, is dialed in and want to do it. So sure. we're kind of spoiled, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but we know there's a whole fire service world out there that's never heard of any of us. Yeah. They've never heard of FDIC, right, right. but you, you, you hit it uh, on the head and, and we're as guilty of this as anybody. We don't do a good job preparing our officers. Mm -hmm. You know, we think because you were a fireman for 10 years that you should be a good fire officer right. and that you're just going to learn. Um, some of it's by design. You know, if you're in a, a civil service system where the person who scores the highest on the right. test gets the job, that's no way to pick leadership. No, no. But I also think how we define it, you know, to me, and you guys are the experts on the topic, to be leadership boils down to influence. Mm -hmm. If I'm a good influence in the firehouse and, and I'm, I'm trying to get my people to be the best version of themselves, throw out all the other stuff, the terms and, and, and all this stuff then I'm probably doing a pretty good job. Yeah. If I'm a negative influence of everybody, when I walk in a firehouse, goes, Oh, great. <laughs> the old the man's kitchen. here. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I think, I think it's a combination of, of preparing ourselves. I, I think sometimes we maybe put a little too much pressure on our people to be a certain type of, you know, mm -hmm. leadership is an art and a science. That's true. And, and so the fire service is a great opportunity for us to all have the artistic side of leadership mm -hmm. our, our things that are important to us and how we want to communicate to our people and relate, you know, do we want to have a life with them outside, uh, you know, go to ball games and stuff or, or not? Th those are all fine. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I think we just don't do a great job of really creating that leadership box, mm -hmm. if you will, of, of, of what you got to kind of do. And then what we will allow you to do to be yourself right. and, and not try to make you something else. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that um, um, what it gets down to as well, and I like that point you made that, you know, we – we, a, lot, a lot of us may have a certain thing that, okay, being a good leader means this, yeah, this, and this. Like this. And if you get, check all these boxes, <laughs> you're a good leader. And I think human relationships and leadership is too dynamic. I think the underlying thing, like you said, is influence. But <clears throat> some of the best leaders I have known throughout this career in, in other uh, industries didn't necessarily have the status of right, being the leader. The they were just very influential. They were very genuine. And I think the key word that I, that I knew for all of those people I've observed, they were genuine. Mm -hmm. They genuinely cared about people. That care turned into how can I serve? That care turned into um, that um, better influence. And next thing you know, they're doing more of what following you, then they may be following the official sure, leader absolutely. just because it was some genuine concern. And you didn't need the civil service test to determine mm -hmm. whether he was that person because the, the the that test probably just depicts that you know how to take a good test. That's it. But it doesn't depict that you are going to be a good leader. Right. And to and your point about being things. genuine, firefighters yeah. can see through that in a exactly. heartbeat. Right. They exactly. know if you're being – you know, we've always heard the stories about you were this way in, a, in the firehouse yeah. as a fireman, yeah. and now you're the boss. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, 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 This is yeah. the way it's going to be. Forget where you came from. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and 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 you know, firefighters don't forget a thing. They'll yeah. remind you yeah. of the mistakes you made on your first day yeah. when you retire after yeah. thirty. So I think all those things are part of it. But to me, leadership in the fire service is fascinating because it is so unique, yeah. and because we are so uh, spread out, we're not centralized. And and to me, it's just if if you're truly a student of the art and science of of leadership. It's just a really, really cool thing, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and you, you got great leaders that, that aren't necessarily warm, welcoming people, but yet you'd follow them anywhere. Yeah, and then you yeah. got those that are, that are more compassionate yeah. and want to learn a little more about you. Mm -hmm. and, 
and they each have their strengths. So it's, mm -hmm. it's just kind of a really neat thing to talk about and yeah. study and, and teach like you guys do. Yeah. yeah. I think at the end of the day too, though, uh, one of the common things, like you said, is, is the influence, but also the inspiration. You yeah. know what I mean? That, that, yeah. that if, if you can inspire people to be, you know, great or to follow behind a, uh, a common mission or whatever, that's, you know, a good kind of determining factor, even though you might have different, like, personality ways to get there mm -hmm. or whatever if you're able to do that i just like i said i'm i applaud you know people like you oh, books like and things like that who are going out and into this you know new we'll i think say, what i've learned about that learned know? in my years of doing all of it whether it's fire service and other things we've been involved in is that it gets back and that's what we that's the core of our personal leadership mm -hmm. mission for 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 our brand is this stay in the mirror perfecting dissecting you amen Come and on. when you do that you'll find your purpose you'll find or you a leader you may not be quote unquote a leader mm -hmm. but you could be such a good person and such a genuine person and such a grounded person who who operates on a certain amount of tried and true principles that people would just follow you anyway mm -hmm. you won't you you know i think the person who has to like hey how you doing the leader here yeah you're right right you know i think if you're that person you're not the leader and no. if you spend more you should time never have to tell to, somebody you're right, the leader right and if you spend that time trying to always promote i'm the leader or trying to promote that brand and not spending time in your genuine look in the mirror, I need to fix that self. It's going to eventually catch up with you. You're going to get found out. And then you're going to, you know, we, and we're seeing that now mm -hmm. on the news. It's full of people who you looked at once as up here, but they were riding people mm -hmm. and that, that stench finally rose to now everybody smells it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And That's some good, people have been smelling analogy. it for a long time. They just got <laughs> paid off. Right, right, I mean, right, right. But now the stench is here, and now <laughs> everybody knows. <laughs> now you're feeling like, oh, I can't believe it. Well, you, you, should, you should have fixed that along the way because none of us are perfect. But when you find stuff that can really, you know, crash that house of cards, you need to be, you know, building those strong foundations. And you need to do that along with, if, if leadership has you, you know, kind of elevating up a little bit in your status, you need to be fixing the the those private right. things you need to fix that along the way you that can time. erode you over I time. I think what you both said well is is that if you're spending a lot of time trying to convince people you're the leader, then you're not leading. <laughs> you're wasting you know your time. I mean? yeah. Like you're not really leading because a second only has that so much space in it to do whatever. So if you're spending most of that time saying. But that's yeah. another part of the thing that's important is the humility part of it, right? Yeah. You know, say, say I'm a quiet and I'm kind of a reserved person. And if I have that person in my firehouse that is more outgoing and that gets the attention, well, I can work against them or with them, right? right. I, I can be on my team and, and let that be my senior man or woman and let them somewhat run the firehouse under my mm -hmm. vision and so forth. Or, or my ego gets in the way and yeah. says, no, they like you more than they like me. And now it, it starts to become this. And, and a lot of company officers and fire chiefs, their careers, their careers have been ruined mm -hmm. uh, because that ego gets in the way. And, and they just feel like they can't give anything to anybody else. And, it, and it's a shame. It's, they don't it's, know the uh, difference between an ego system and an ecosystem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you should be but, creating that ecosystem. And, and, and I'm going I'm to put, put one of my guys on blast that used to be work with me uh, when I was in St. Louis. And David and I talked to him last night. Um, Galen Taylor, he's probably going to be looking at this and reading. But anyway, he, he's when, when I was uh, a, the captain at the 13s, one of my best senior people was Galen. Mm -hmm. Now, Galen, you know, he may or may not be a captain one day, I don't know, but very, very influential. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he takes care of business in the union. He takes care of business at the firehouse. And, and he was the guy where new people come in and I give them my speech about my expectations and stuff like that. And then I'll say, okay, for the rest of it, go talk to Galen. Mm -hmm. And Galen would, Pull them down. We used to call him Mother Hen, Huggy Bear, and all that because he's going to grab you, bring you in, and say, Okay, we got you. I'm going to take care of you. We're going to take care of business. And how much and, easier and does that make your it, job it makes as it the like boss easy. in the house? Right. Knowing but, but I was the boss, right? right. But he, he was the influence. Mm -hmm. 
and you allowed them to be that. Right. You allowed them to be that. Yeah. Do you? Do you? But the do other you? side of that right. is you try to shut them down, yeah. and now now you both become kind yeah. of villains, and, yeah, yeah. and the crew see through that. So that yeah. that's you know yeah. that's part of it. You want to get people who compliment your weaknesses. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we yeah. all have them. Yeah, no, he was excellent at being a leader without the title. Right, he yep. was the leader yep. of the shift, and still is today. If I need to know what's going on, hey, what's going on? Thirteens about this. Who do I call? <laughs> Gale, you know, yeah. so, right. that's because right. he's gonna he's gonna know. Now he's. We 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 tease about him knowing too much sometimes and you know, like that, but I was, but you gotta take the good with the bad, yes, you right, do. Right. But other than that, that was that's the epitome to me of somebody who's very caring, very genuine, got your back no matter what. If I say I'm going out to town, his first thing is like, you got somebody to get your mail because mm-hmm. he's gonna come down. You know, I'd get into the mm-hmm. house, he'll text me. I went through the house, everything looks good. Or whatever you know, Man. I didn't have to ask, him, but he's got that genuine love and concern for people. And being in the fire service is just really there are those that wear the brotherhood t shirt, and then there are those that live the brotherhood, right, right, they don't right. look the yeah. same. Yeah. No, 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 no. And that's no. the same thing you're talking about, right. though. Somebody who's trying to say, yeah. Hey, yo, I'm, I'm with the brother, yeah. Yeah. you know, and they're not showing that in practice. Those are, you know, two different people, but actions other- speak louder than words, all <laughs> definitely. Absolutely. The other good thing, too, is letting. Uh, everybody be their authentic self yeah. at the job, and and, and not then be threatened incorporating by it, that right. right into everybody the, can bring something the to the team. table. Everybody, Absolutely. and it's up to you as the leader yep. to identify what that is, and then put them puzzle pieces together yep. to make the team. Absolutely, that's your job as the, the official leader. Yep. If you don't know how to do that, then you don't lost the team. You know. So, uh, with all this great, and you see why they picked. I Scott do. is, I is the keynote. You see that? Oh, you, you see you. that right now? It's always great uh, to visit with you yeah. guys. Always. Uh, so uh, you don't have to give the keynote away. We don't, we're not expecting you to do that. However, you heard it here f- first, folks. Uh, uh, you're going to get certain nuggets yeah, yeah. of why this guy. Uh, hey, this is is Laskin Salka right yeah. there. <laughs> but um, so give us kind of a without giving it away because we want we want people to show up at the keynote right, you know right. don't sleep in folks 8 right. 30 tomorrow come see the keynote but um kind of give i mean you know i know the title i like the title has mm-hmm. cowboy because <laughs> right, of right, right, so, right. but kind of kind of kind of give us what a little teaser like this is a trailer yeah, exactly yeah, that's that, that's in the film business about to say, like, give us like a trailer the, yeah, of what to to the I'm, I'm gonna kind of talk a lot about culture mission and recruitment and retention mm-hmm. and you may recognize my walk-up song because it's uh from my uh, stepdaughter so we're gonna have that in there we're gonna have have <laughs> the assignment money. Yeah. take money and we're getting that in but uh you know just kind of like what we've kind of been talking about uh kind of redefining, you know, I wrote an article a couple of years ago, are we breeding aggression out of firefighters? Mm-hmm. And, and so it's kind of, um, it's going to probably ruffle a few feathers. There's going to be a couple of fire chiefs who, who don't buy into mm-hmm. what I'm selling, but it, it goes back to, Get to, off to the just stage, what we Thompson. say, yeah. right, right. <laughs> you know, there's an expectation of firefighters mm-hmm. in the community. Mm-hmm. And if we don't understand that, we don't focus and reset that, that, that true North and, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I use an analogy. I do it in some of my class, so I'm not letting the cat out of the bag uh, in, in, with police and active shooters in schools. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, communities have told them how they will now respond. Yes. And I'm afraid if we don't stay vigilant to that mission, we could very well have our community say, hey, let me tell you what risk right. you're going to right, take. Right, right. If my baby is up there, yeah. your job is Let's to go, go get it. Yeah. And, and I think we've lost some of that. You know, I, I think... Uh, we, we've started focusing more inward, not that we're not important, mm-hmm. but every one of us has hired and exists to go out and, and serve them. And, and so that's, that's what we're going to talk mm-hmm. about. Um, I know when you did the speech in Illinois, you made that comparison. I love that comparison. And um, I mean, unless it's something you're going to have a major part of your speech to um, no, do the keynote, but kind of, I, I like that kind of, if you will, Make that comparison because one of the things you did was kind of a case study of how um, the, it was a failed system to go in and make the uh, uh, take down, neutralize the shooter. And when that didn't happen, they failed the system of the expectation, mm. basically cowering to safety than the mission mm. and how 
that expectation is set and how you kind of parallel to what we should be doing as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's hand in hand, you know, going back as far as Columbine. I right. think it's when it really started. And then as recently as Uvalde yeah, is, right. and, and I'm going to share some some uh, stuff that are, um, not all of it's <laughs> sure. exactly like, but but that's the same. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there, there were reports done by the U.S. Department of Justice and also of the Texas House of Representatives. And they use some very strong language, mm. which I'm going to share that saying, if you are a police officer mm -hmm. and you respond to this event, you will risk your life yeah. to protect an innocent victim. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. Right. And uh, I share something that uh, the Denton County Sheriff put out. And so uh, just kind of getting us refocused and saying, you know, for years in the fire service, we said, we will tell you what we can do to protect you. Mm. And we've gotten away with it. But right. now with social media and the yeah. way it is, yeah. we're going to get a knock on our door that says, Mr. Firefighter, let me tell you what you are going to do yeah. if yeah. my house catches yeah. on fire. And, and then, you know, not to take up the time, but if you think about it also, I can't keep up. There's six or seven shows on a week now in prime time, and I don't watch them, but the Station 19 and all these mm -hmm. others that are depicting firefighters mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And so people are sitting in their homes and they're getting this idea of what we should be doing. Right, right. And not that we're going to look like Hollywood or be anything like Hollywood. Let's just Scott, Scott, Scott Thompson. Thompson. Yeah, right. Let's <laughs> let you yeah. fire engineering but, sexiest but, man alive. But the point is there is an expectation <laughs> right. out there, Absolutely. and we're foolish to think that it's not. We can't keep pulling back the, the curtains and saying, well, we're don't worry, we're, we're professionals. Well, what does that look like? So right. – I'm going to talk about that, get a, get a little uh, get a little revved up on some things and just, hey. just see see where it goes. Yeah, the ratings are going through the roof. Yeah. So what do you think is, is taking uh, the fire industry away from that? You said, like, we need to get back to it. What do you think is taking Yeah, you know, I, I just think we have just um, – we, we, we focus so much on the data to protect firefighters mm -hmm. because it's comfortable. Yeah. It's kind of low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. And it, it's much easier to, to, to focus on those things than the – because – if I make an operational decision and, and something bad happens, I own that. Mm. You got to be okay to do it. So as a fire chief, it's much easier for me to say no, mm. minimize my, my risk acceptance more towards risk avoidance. And that way, you know, it's, it's a clean bet. And, and, and I think that happens in little chunks. I don't think anybody takes that big dive, but I, I think a lot of little actions we're taking more and more seconds away from what I call that zero impact period, the mm -hmm. time from when we get on scene, do we start doing firefighter mm -hmm. stuff? Mm -hmm. Some of it we have to, but uh, if we keep taking those seconds away, whether it's two in, two out or whatever it is, at some point, and we're costing more and more money. We're not getting any cheaper. Mm -hmm. At some point, it's going to go, wait, time yeah, out. Yeah, I just yeah, bought yeah. you a $1.7 million ladder yeah, truck, right. and you're telling me you're not going to do this and you're not going right. to do that? Right. I could have given you a utility light truck with a bucket on it. <laughs> right, you could have right, got right, as much right, done. Right. You got better results. Right. And, and so I just think if we're not careful, we're going to get called out. Yeah. It, it's kind of like the principle we talked about before. You can uh, keep on elevating, elevating, elevating calls, elevating, you know, who we are as far as what the brand is. But if, if the genuine person you're supposed to be as a firefighter doesn't catch up to their justification, like you say, eventually people are going to start asking – not eventually. They're already answering mm -hmm. questions. Well, they are. You know. They are. Why, 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 why do you exist? Yeah. And and if we can't, you don't want people to die, but you got to, we have to accept it. Mm -hmm. And you can't be afraid to, uh, when I used to do recruit classes, I used to tell them all the time, and, and I want you to, I, I thought about this when uh, you were doing the keynote, and I want you to say something <laughs> okay. about this. Um about when the person first walks up to the firehouse and you meet them outside with a cup of coffee yeah. and tell them what they expect. Yeah. So, but I used to do something not as eloquent what you said, but similar. And I was like, if you're afraid to die, leave it's now. There's it. it, yeah. no, it's no shame. Right. You got your nice suit on. You got the uh, parents whoever here who want to wish you well on signing up. But I'm gonna let you know, uh, Uncle Larry ain't gonna. I'm not going to pull any punches. You could die. You could get burned. You, you could, could be debilitated. There's yeah. a lot of bad stuff bad that can stuff. happen to you. If you're not ready to sign up for that, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But what's going to be insulting is you keep fronting like you want to, and then when it happens, then you You always got the air mask you, problem. You, 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 always got, right, right. you always got the issue. You, you, right. you, don't, you don't waste my time teaching this recruit class, and you, you've fallen well below my expectations of what needs to be done. 
But uh, tell them right quick, like if somebody, well, they listen to this one, mm-hmm. somebody walks in and say, I'm ready to be a fireman. And Scott meets yeah, so we, we have a, a mentoring process. And, <laughs> and so what we do, it's kind of a way we bring in a new member. So, so you know, let's say, let's say Sally's our new firefighter and, and uh, I'm a scientist or mentor. And I'll call her. I'll reach out to her the night before shift. And I'll say, hey, Sally, my name is Scott Thompson. I'm not an officer. I'm a senior man at Engine 11. And I'm assigned to your mentor. What time are you going to get to the firehouse in the morning? She said, oh, you know, I'll get there at 6 o'clock. Great, I'll meet you. So we have it, and, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it, but we have it in our mentor package. So as she approaches the firehouse, I meet her out in the apron with coffee. I introduce myself. I emphasize again, I'm not, I'm not an officer. I'm a firefighter just like you, but I want you to listen very closely to what I'm about to tell you. It's not okay to get die or get injured on this job, but you will be put in situations that could kill you or end your career. Mm. If you spend any amount of time doing the work of a firefighter or paramedic, you will have relationship challenges, substance abuse challenges, sleep disruption, a higher rate of cancer, aches and pains, and all these things that we talk about. Do you understand what you're getting into? And then I like to say, when you fly the exit row in Southwest and the stewardess makes right, you go right. verbally say <laughs> right, yes, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> because we try to make this job for everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't mean to, to exclude people, but it's, it's not, not for everybody. Not. It, it can go bad that, that quickly. And I think, you know, we get people who come in and think it's about, you know, wearing a T-shirt and everybody buying you mm-hmm. lunch and all that other stuff. And Kirk Isaacson says it the best. But, yeah, we don't want to kill a firefighter. But this job, even if it it's nothing spectacular – yeah, you, know, you know, it could be uh, getting hit on the highway. It could right. a number of things. Um, we just, I think it, it, we call it the power of day one. It's the most important message we want you to hear as you start this journey. And if you're not okay with it, like you say, hey, no, no foul. Yeah. It's not for everybody. But down. we got to stop making this job where everybody can do it. And and that concerns me. And, and it has nothing to do uh, with with anything other than just why your motivation. Why are you getting into this? Mm-hmm. And, and so um, no, I agree. Th- th- that's kind of what it's about. Yeah. And um, no, that's I love very it. necessary. I love it. And we yeah. hope that lasts them a lifetime. And, yeah. and, you know, everybody's day one message will be a little different. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think we, we've we worked so hard to say that this is so safe that we've almost let let on to that yeah. people kind of let their guard down. Yeah. And, and the other part of that message is we want them to take ownership of their own health and safety because. Mm-hmm. We can all break every safety policy there is if we try. Yeah. And so they got to want to do it to take care of themselves. You know, mm-hmm. my captain's going to watch after me, but I could be in a situation where my captain's down and now I got to call the mayday or I got to yep. call the ball. Yep. And, and let's just get that all out on the table yeah. and, and understand that that hopefully it never happens, mm-hmm. but it could. Very, very well. uh, I was really impressed with one of the conversations we had, what your sense of, um, and this kind of addresses what you asked earlier. How do you keep the admission mindset? in between doing the yearly oath maybe. Mm-hmm. And, 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 but, and you and I talk about this all the time. If you develop principal systems that you practice all the time every day, um, these are the kind of things that keep you sharp. Mm-hmm. It keeps the, knife, keeps the knife sharp or it keeps the ax, whatever, your tool of choice. It keeps it sharp so you can continue to be effective. And you know um, when that becomes critical, and, mm-hmm. and you've experienced it to a degree, mm-hmm. but God forbid that bad day happens yeah. and something occurs, I can go to that person's loved one and look them in the eye and say, I did everything I could do to position us for success. This was just bigger than we can handle. Exactly. And a family can can deal with that better that, than right going, now. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But, but You're we, the professional. What do you mean you don't know yeah, what happened? Yeah. We had the best equipment. We had the best training. I cared about you. I supervised you. We understood where our limitations were. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I fear for the person who has to have that conversation. Yeah. And all they're going to do is make a lot of excuses when on the front end, they could have taken action yeah. to do everything to prevent, prevent that. It. But there's no way we're ever going to make this job safe. No, nope. mm-hmm. We can make it safer. We can make it less dangerous. But to say that it's good, you're going to be protected and safe is, is just we're leading it's people not. astray. Yeah. You, um, so your average roll call is the roll call. And then tell me, I like what we talked about. You do the roll call. And then after that, you do some quick drills yeah. every 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 morning they, they do this every day really? not just, yeah but what, now we're not as busy as st louis fire department <laughs> right. but, but you know the, the the neat thing about this is is it's not coming from me it's a grassroots right. thing now mm-hmm. when i came into the colony i wanted i called it a, a high performance learning culture we wanted to pursue a certain culture but the men and women of the organization have done it done it uh, and taken have done great things but like I'm housed with Battalion 1 and Engine 11. I start work at 7 o'clock. That's when they're shipped. Every morning, the rig is pulled out. 
the battalion chief is putting all his gear on, making mm-hmm. sure he knows where his gloves are. He's putting his pack on. He, he's taking a puff air. The guys on the engine are stretching a line, loading it back the way they like it. We have a forcible entry door in a firehouse. So they're doing all this before eight o'clock in the morning. Then they'll go eat lunch. And then, you know, I'll just hear them on the radio. We're going to go out to a parking lot or do this. We're going to go out to the yard, which is our training facility. But I think it's because what I said earlier, we got a culture going to where the men and women don't look at training as a punishment or as a task. They look at it as an action step for their success Mm -hmm. and they're taking ownership of it. So it's really been pretty cool. And and I'm a very small, I'm not taking any credit Mm -hmm. for that. It's, it's the battalion chiefs and the captains who, who uh, don't want to have that conversation and say, Hey, I didn't do my job. You know, regrets are are terrible things. And I couldn't imagine, and I hope I never have to, uh, you know, losing that crew member and 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 thinking if I only would have, mm-hmm. I wish I would have. And so, you know, that's the courageous part of leadership. And and so those are kind of, uh, but yeah, our our guys are just they're, they're they're training all the time. But again, we're not super busy. Yeah. But I I have a deal with them. I'll I'll allow them to be aggressive problem solvers as long as I know they're putting on the work in the front end. Right. If they want to start relaxing, that's fine. But we're not going to do some of the stuff that we're doing right yeah, now. Yeah, Let's understand sure. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to look a lot different. And so we got to kind of got an agreement. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I like that. Every morning there's this defined that's way amazing. to sharpen yeah. the skills. Yeah. You know. So who knows? We we might be doing that in Collinsville. <laughs> But okay. Have, okay. Let me get that. <laughs> but, but that kind of thing is one of those things that can keep the, the yeah. It keeps, sharp but to keep it sharp. Keep, that's yeah. that's my point. Yeah, just it's keep your about, head in the game. Yeah, yeah. it's not about some um, fancy technique or uh, uh, Scott said they do it. Wow. So now you go. It's it, it, it it's a principal way of being. And when it's a principal way of being, you you're setting up as much as you can control mm-hmm. for success. And that's all you can do. And like you said, at that point, if something tragic happens, you can look whoever you need to look in the eye and say, we did everything. it was bigger than me. And in every other profession, you got to embrace the suck. If you're playing football or basketball, <laughs> right. you got those painful hours of yeah. shooting a yeah. thousand free throws yeah. or, or whatever it is. You got to get those sets. And, and I always use the analogy, you know, Tiger Woods is a great golfer. Yep. Um, and he still goes to a swing coach because yeah. he wants that little performance yeah, advantage right. yeah. that's going to make him a little better right, right and so so that's all it really is yeah. is you know i want, want to give you that return ticket home you come in in the morning we're going to do everything we can to get you back home but yeah. we're going to see some pretty crazy stuff in between <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Absolutely. no i love it i love it um it's it's just i mean you could talk about this stuff for hours and, <laughs> and we don't have an hour but <laughs> but seriously um i love that like-minded mentality mm, because absolutely. Uh, you're going to go up against some resistance if you do this long enough. I mean, every sense that I've been taking it more seriously. I mean, you come on the job, you don't know anything. You kind of identify with a few leaders and you say, okay, I kind of want to emulate some of that. I don't want to do that. Don't and do then, that. And yeah, then right. you start to develop your own mm-hmm. um, brand and attitude, and which has evolved from that to Dave, what David and I do now. We didn't know one day it was going to be this. Mm. You know, I'm sitting in the firehouse and I'm reading articles and I'm mm. reading books and I'm I'm reading stuff about, you know, people like Scott or <laughs> Rick Lasky or whatever like that. And like, OK, this is cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Be nice to meet them one yeah, day. you know. Yeah, yeah. And then when what we start doing, start taking national traction, I'm like, wow. It, it, but that came from a place of of wanting to do better myself mm-hmm. and then wanting to share that with people that I thought we can help. And, and you probably learn from every group that you interact with. Yeah. You guys Absolutely. get yeah. to sharpen your songs. I didn't think Absolutely. about that. Yeah. Or so, yeah. so it's a two way thing. Yeah. No, I yeah. mean, we were just talking about that yesterday, how uh, the program, when we uh, initially put it together versus the program now is like almost like night and day, yeah. I yeah. Mean, you know, just As you because, listen to the people that, that talk to you, it's, and it's an awesome things. deal. I yeah. think I think uh, last year, the year before, I sat there, you guys mm-hmm. here, and it's, it's a great thing. And we need more of it. You yeah. know, we need yeah. more leadership. and But we don't need the gimmicks, and we don't no. need the one-liners. And, right. yeah. you know, somebody asked don't me why I didn't t-shirt. put more pictures in the book. I said, right. if I had to write it, I want you to read right. it. Right. Right. It wasn't right. meant to be right. a color right. book. Yeah. Right. This ain't put this some ain't effort a, in it. This ain't a big coffee table book. I mean, that's kind of the nature of the how things are seeming to go today and kind of to your point yeah. about getting away from yeah. what the the baseline mission is and and 
the inherent dangers in that. Now we could lose some of that because everybody's sort of getting away from training every day from really getting digging down in or reading a book you know yeah. what i mean and yeah actually that, reading yeah yeah, that yeah. Book is a photo sound album bites or, or yeah. whatever or yeah video or mm -hmm. only or whatever and you know i'm saying that being a filmmaker but mm -hmm. still you know what i mean it's like the appropriate but you're probably seeing in your profession oh, also the commitment 100%. people make to learning their lines and scripts and all that other they're not willing to put in the hard work and read something for an hour right, if they can't right. read in 30 seconds they're turning yeah right, 100 right. I, my wife and i uh, we do auditions and things all the time and and <laughs> old school is they'll send you uh a, like a big role and your audition might be seven pages of, of the lines that you had to learn yeah. and then do the audition now they say you don't have to learn them and you can people are sitting there reading lines to the yeah. and then I'm like, well, then it's no wonder when you see the show, you say it sounds it's like a, they're reading lines. Right, right, right. Oh, yep, yep. But I'm they saying practice that, like they're but it's like that with uh, kind of like what you're saying, mm -hmm. because what people started saying is we really should be paying them to learn all those lines. We don't want to spend that money. So now we say you can read the lines. We kind of bring the performance. So we lower the down. standard exactly. instead of maintaining and then wonder it. why the product turns out. Uh, yeah. substandard so i'm saying that's kind of yeah. the same way when you say well people are sort of getting away from what this is really about what's you know what i mean really what the type of stuff you're supposed to have are we identifying people who are actually firefighter material you know what i mean or are we just saying we're just gonna mm -hmm. uh be open to yep. you know everybody? and unfortunately we are you know because of the recruitment and retention people are lowering the standards yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's just like i'm not that worried about sense. getting a good firefighter i just want to get somebody in here right. and that looks a whole lot different yeah. down the road yeah let me say this as we start to wrap up yeah um <laughs> I, I i never wanted to be there when i first came on there were old guys they sit around and complain oh Mark, back in my day i was like i don't want to be that guy then all of a sudden I start turning to get off my lawn. Right. And really, I don't like people on my lawn. I know that, yeah. I like the true green guy on my lawn. Get off 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 my lawn. You to me, I was. True green stuff Get off my lawn. You said to me, I'm mowing. I'm mowing the lawn. Get off my lawn. But, so, but I've turned into the old guy in this regard. The world has dummy down. And 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 all of us are suffering. I'm not trying to say like we're no. so smart in the world. All of us have become part of the culture. Yep. What well, we don't know our mom's phone number right now. Mm -hmm. If you ask me what's my mother's phone, I have to think hard because all you I never do have to is go on there and just, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, push yeah. mom. Back in the day, I had to know the phone number. Let me just. I, I'm I, know sorry. A lot I, of I actually know. Oh, shut up. Uh, uh, her number and it's, it's, it's some points for mom. Here. mom you're because, not a favorite son. Mom, I love you. That's what it is. This I, I keep telling you that he doesn't. You know what? Ever since I was 13 and I recognized that he didn't. Don't listen to me. But who knows your oh, name? Right. Uh -oh, anyway, uh, remember that when you're doing the will. I'm yeah, just yeah. Next Christmas. <laughs> Wait a anyway. you were saying. Go on. Yeah. Please, please finish. But yeah. I'm saying that we don't know people's right. phone. Do no, you know my right. phone number? Wait, who are you? Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So no, let me get my phone. Of course I do. I mean, it's uh, big brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but where I'm going with that is that we, in in the, for to make life simpler and more yeah. convenient, yeah. we've gone down that road to we don't have to think a lot anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. everything's convenient. You go, you don't have to carry. I, I forget my wallet. Oh man, the, the yeah, phone. The phone yeah. You know, so it's just yeah. everything's super convenient. It's kind of a good thing, but in some cases, I don't think it is. And and there's no going back because now we 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 way down. I mean, Skynet is going to be taking over oh, pretty yeah, soon. We yeah, got no Terminator is going to come back yeah, to help yeah. us out. Yeah. But, yeah. But where I'm going with that is this: we can't afford to go way down that road in firefighting. Right. In my opinion. No. No. We can't. But it's hard not to when everything else, you when know everything I mean, is, is pulled that, that way. Yeah. We we bring that attitude or bring new people to, to like Dave and I were talking about the other day. When we started doing glue about 12 years ago, the leadership program, a person that was 12 is 24 now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so yeah. they grew up in the culture of this is the way it is. So they bring that attitude to the fire service, I got the luxury of bringing in one. You still had to do things manually. Uh, I, when I, I drew, I've driven fire trucks to fires 
they had the one siren mm-hmm. on top and it was a yellow fire truck yeah. that was a stick shift. I have to double bank clutch seat. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, double clutch it. Uh, no computers. You no, was no. fighting fires with yeah. with levers and gauges yeah. and stuff. And sometimes yeah. the gauges were broke. You tap yeah. it, yeah. You know, and he, the guy hang out the windows. The hydraulics was it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that kind of deal. But, but that's so what that's you did. Why, but we still put the fire out. Right. But you had to think more. These days, you know, I think people fighting fires with iPads now. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, the pumper pulls up, they pull up. But, you know, I think there's a grassroots effort, and it's somewhat encouraging. You know, we're starting to see this younger generation. They're buying some of the old books that, that we, we were in when they came out, you know, you know, new things 30, 30 years, 20 years ago. And, and data, you know, uh, science is, is starting to be coming in. So, you know, I think there is a group that, that is willing to take the deep. Buy. It's not enough, yeah. but hopefully they're drawing in some, you know, you guys go to a lot of fire conferences mm-hmm. And, and we're starting to give more justification and less opinion and yeah, less feelings yeah. about stuff. So, you know, hopefully that will continue. I'm afraid yeah. that might be a fad, though, and people yeah. get. But what's happening is we're starting to whole, know a whole lot of things, a little bit about a whole lot of things yeah. and not a lot about right. any yeah. one thing. <laughs> right. And so that, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you what. I mean, embracing new technology, some amazing things going on in our world and in the fire service, stuff yeah. like that. Hey. That's cool, but let's just not get to the point to where we don't have to think at all. Because right. at the end of the day, you can't pay any entity, robot or whatever like that, to crawl in, give Miss McGillicuddy and the baby, and drag him out. You still have to. This human. There's always going to be a train need for manual firefighters. Thank you. Always. You got to drag that. One of the things I said before is that I love being part of the culture of this principle. From the beginning of time, water has put out fire. Mm-hmm. And whether there was a fire that got out of control in caveman time where they had to kind of bucket brigade this thing and put it out until they developed fire hoses to yeah. transfer water from the source to the fire mm-hmm. or whatever they had to do. We're still part of that. Well, you still putting your hand on the fire hose today. You're part of that long tradition of no matter how computerized, how fancy, how air conditioned. Water wins. Kind of, mm-hmm. You still have to pour that hose yeah. out and drag it into that house and Put that fire out and make you that still got to do a search and get those that. people that there's not going to find ain't a machine ain't that's going to get them the out. world going to help you with that. Mm-hmm. So that's why we can't afford to be so. And until we have out. access to every private home to mm-hmm. go in and do inspections, there'll yeah. always be a need for manual sure. fire suppression. So. Always. And it's getting more dynamic because of the compartments are different now. Yeah, yeah. So with different Everything. compartments, that's why you need yep. to learn about. What how how fast it burns and be smart in that regard. And so, when you get down to it, it ends up being about the perfecting of a thing, and that's yeah, in everything. Yeah, yeah. Everything, that's in everything. Like you said, knowing a, a little about a lot yeah. of things, but it should be a thing where you learn to perfect a thing. And and as a professional in any anything, you can never learn too much about building construction and, yeah, and fire yeah, behavior. Yeah, you're you're never going to know it all. The, uh, anything that could kill you, you need to learn yeah. as much as you can about it. You got any parting words, Scott? No, sir. Just thank you for having me on. Always Thanks good to coming. see you guys and catch yeah, up. And, yeah. and did love talking. I love yeah. our texts and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And so, uh, no, man, we, keep um, doing great things. And I'll thank you for down allowing me to share some time. Dallas area yeah. around uh, Memorial Day next month. So I'll right. let you know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in town. Come out. See how they do it in the colony. Yeah, in the colony. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. We the got some colony. New right. fun places yeah. open up. We got okay. some cool places to hang out. So love to have you guys come visit. What's up? Anything, David? No, I mean, I'm just looking forward to, to the keynote. And, yeah, me too. We're going to be the ones. Yeah, Scott! Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope I don't trip over my shoelaces. <laughs> yeah, so I'm yeah, walking yeah, out right, there. Right, right. <laughs> Scott's tripping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just fall with grace. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump back up. And act, oh, like, hey. act like I meant to do it. Yeah, right, right. Right. I meant to do that. Yeah. All right. Have a great FDIC. This is Larry Conley podcast signing off. And um, check us out. We'll check you out. We'll see you Thursday, 1.30 to 3.15.